So, now we've had some more time to digest the brand new multiplayer gameplay that's been revealed for Battlefield 5 and all of the information that came along with it, today I'm going to throw even more information at you. I had the opportunity the other day to sit down with Daniel Berlin, he's the design director for Battlefield 5, to discuss the brand new game and talk about plenty of things that are going to be included. Now there's some really good answers in this interview here, some more difficult questions that I pitched to him, and and of course, there are some things he couldn't answer, but I thought I'd leave those responses in there. I know you guys and girls want as much information as possible for Battlefield 5, and you want to hear all of this kind of stuff that I'm going to be asking him. So, no more waffle from me. Let's just get straight into this interview. Okay, so first of all, uh, Battlefield 5's reveal was a little bit polarizing for some people. Um, looking back at it now, having revealed what you've revealed at EA Play, do you think you should have done the Battlefield 5 reveal any differently, or are you happy with how that went? Um, I think we could have gone out with more information, um, because there's a lot that we actually talked to you guys about, and there's a lot that we actually talked about um, with general press in terms of like how the game functions, and we understand that that didn't necessarily get tra um, translated. Um, so I would definitely try to get more information out earlier, um, but that's why also why we're, we're really picking it up here at uh, EA Play to make sure that we're, uh, we're letting everyone get hands on with the game. We're letting people actually capture the game and then release the footage. So full transparency of what the game is and how it functions here at EA Play. Okay, so that's cool to hear because it was definitely um, from my own community, it was quite polarizing. Some people looked at it and thought, great, I'm going to play this. It looks really cool. Some people were like, I'm not really sure they've revealed the game that I was expecting them to reveal, but... Having seen that trailer the other day, I think the tone of that trailer and the way that all the information was displayed, I think, was done in a much more somber tone, I think, which is, I guess, what people expect from, like, a World War II setting. So maybe it was just the fact that you, you did do something that was so drastically different. It caught people by surprise, maybe? I mean, I, I think the, the thing we really, really wanted to show in the reveal was the, the extent of all the systems that we've actually built. Because, I mean, if you look at that reveal trailer over and over and over again, you'll actually catch so many small things. There's like, there's a new movement system, and they're chucking back the grenades and shooting grenades in the sky. So there's just so much in it, versus this, um, this trailer we're showing here for EA Play is actually a depiction of the ground operations that's playable on the floor. Um, so there's in the trailer you'll see gameplay footage, actual gameplay footage of um, of the game, and then also if you want to be uh, see actual gameplay uncut and anything, you can just go to I guess either your channel or a bunch of other influencers um, to just uh, to, to watch that. Basically. Okay, that's great. Um, now I've got a few comments from people at this early stage. Obviously, games in pre-alpha um, that it does look a little bit similar to Battlefield One. Um, I've played the game quite extensively for about four or so hours now. Uh, and I would argue there are some things that make it drastically different. What would you say to people that are saying this looks like Battlefield 1? What would you tell them? Why would you say that this game is different compared to the last game you made? I mean, first and foremost, I'd say play the game, you know, <laughs> because, because uh, when you play the game, you'll start noticing that we've made some big, big changes, um, specifically to uh, there's, there's a bunch of stuff. I think one thing that really resonates with me personally is the fortification system and how it actually that changes how you play. Uh, your ability to build sandbags, um, you know, barbed wire, tank stoppers, trenches, uh, what's the um, foxholes, and everything like that just makes it uh, a much more viable uh, defensive loop. Yeah. The mentality here we want we really want to push is that a squad can move in and basically almost uh, turtle a squad, a, a flag, yeah. and make it their own, and really create these choke points. Um, and I think the system marries extremely well with the destruction system, yeah. which is a, it's, it's a staple for the franchise, um, because you fortify up, and then as you from the opposing side of things, you're going to be approaching a flag, and you're going to see at a distance, you're like, holy shit, this thing is completely <laughs> locked down, and then you have to actually apply destruction to bring it down again. Yeah. So it's actually a system. It's, it's almost like a circle yeah. um, how it lives. So I think that that's 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 a big addition to the sandbox. Of battlefield like there's a big addition to to expanding the sandbox uh, the world itself but then um so adding new stuff to the sandbox but then also adding new abilities for the character to interact with the sandbox yeah. getting the things and the capabilities we're giving to the soldiers it's things like being able to shoot grenades out of the sky being able to 
um, uh, pick up grenades from, from the ground and throw them back into enemies, being able to throw yourself to the sides and shoot and then throw yourself backwards and backpedal and shoot, uh, jumping straight for windows without destroying them and then doing a combat roll as you land. Uh, it's just significantly more, you're more capable as a soldier and you have more choice in any given gameplay situation because you have more uh, capabilities, basically. I think those are the really uh, big things that you'll get from the really, from the, you're just like playing the second to second. But I think if you take one step back as well and look at like, okay, how does my day-to-day -day sessions look in this game compared to other Battlefield games, you mean it's, it's a completely different game. Um, and the biggest change here is, of course, the fact that we're uh, removing premium yeah. and allow so we, it's a big thing for the team we've been pushing it for a long time that we don't want to segment the player base we don't want them to actually um, we're saying that this is a squad based game we're saying this is a game we want, want you to play with your friends so we don't want that situation where you're going to be like oh let's play this map and then someone in the squad says I can't because I don't have X so that won't happen anymore yeah. so having removing that and then introducing the types of war where, mm -hmm. which is our um, seasonal approach where we will be going through uh, chapters rather um, in the Tides of War and taking the players on a journey through World War II where we will be introducing you to uh, new theaters of war uh, and not just looking at those uh, as just drops of content uh, but looking at them more in the sense of gameplay experiences so if we drop a map We'll make sure that the vehicles and the weapons and the gadgets and the character archetypes that we release, they all work together so that they actually form um, a gameplay experience. And one, uh, I think, one analogy, for example, we did uh, really well, so like what's in Battlefield 3, we had that mentality, you know, of like actually having a full experience for every um, X pack that we released back then. Oh, yeah, I think yeah, that that's something we really want to. We really want to push that every time you get a new major drop in the types of war, it's going to be the game changes how you play. There's a new gameplay experience every time, basically. So there's plenty of reasons why people should give Battle for Five a go then. <laughs> <laughs> that's just from the top of my head. I mean, we didn't even talk about the company here. So. Yeah, exactly. And to be fair, like that's something that you guys haven't really dive that much into yet. And I think that's probably because it is extremely extensive what you guys are doing there. Um, I want to just quickly talk about you were talking about experiences and the way you want to change the game for the players as part of your Tides of War. A big part of Battlefield is about the smaller communities that like to play their own way, so to speak. Um, Battlefield 1's rental server program, I don't really think gave people what they wanted in terms of the tools they needed to run their own community. They could run one, but it was extremely limited. And then a lot of people felt that they didn't have the right tools and therefore did, just decided not to have their own community. Is that something you guys have taken on board from Battlefield 1 and will try to improve in Battlefield 5? Or is it that your Tides of War approach and the grand operations and that modular system that you guys have got there, is that going to be the driving force? Or are you still going to be offering the wider community tools they need or the tools they want to run their smaller communities? So this is one of those things I can't comment on right now because we're still uh, developing the game. Uh, so I can't comment uh, specifically on any of the RSPs right now. Sorry. That's absolutely fine. Um, I will try and get another interview with you at some point in the future and then hopefully you can talk about it because I know that that's something that a lot of people care about um, but even if you can't say something I would rather have asked you and you give me a I can't talk about that um, will there be a server browser in the game yes well that's good that's definitely a good thing uh, and <laughs> no of course there will be a server browser of course Okay, and I think I will move on from the part about server locations because I'm assuming that's something you can't really talk about based on it's our... It's too early right now to talk about that. Yeah. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Um, now, something I've noticed from uh, a lot of the information that you guys have been releasing about Battlefield Five is you focus a lot on the gunplay and how that's going to change. Um, is there anything you can tell us very briefly, maybe give us some high-level points about the vehicle gameplay? I've noticed that that's kind of... It's there, and you've mentioned it, but you haven't really given it a huge amount of detail yet. I was wondering if you could maybe give us some high-level details about vehicles and maybe specifically, like, um, planes, plane combat and things like that. Because some people loved it in Battlefield 1 because it was very analog. And so they're maybe looking, are you going to extend that experience with, uh, with Battlefield 5? 
Um, ex ex extended from what you see at EA Play today, we don't have any specifics exact. We're, we're actually still trying to figure this out. We're, we're working a lot with it, and the, um, the the vehicle team back in Stockholm are looking extensively at this. But uh, I can, can't comment specifically on this right now. I can say though, one of the big changes we're all doing in recent vehicles is that they also have limited ammo this time around, which is a big change. Okay. Uh, and that all that actually applies to um, airplanes as well. So, 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 so airplanes have limited ammo and they actually need to go back to home base to resupply as well. And there, um, the, uh, there's a visual representation of that resupply and it's actually uh, little balloons in the sky. Okay. Which actually have to circle around and basically we, by doing that you resupply and then you can back it, get back into the combat. So you're making that conscious decision to move away from combat, get what you need and come back in again. Very much like you're doing with soldiers. I've got to go to a resupply station to yes, get what I need. Exactly. Okay, and, and land vehicles as well. Yeah, actually... I think I noticed that during the gameplay, you have to go up to the uh, one of the sort of resupply caches and then interact with it whilst you're in the tank to obtain the ammo back that yeah. you need. You don't, you don't need to leave the tank, you don't need to leave the airplane in order to resupply, but we do get, a, it, it kind of fixes those issue, issues that you've seen in previous titles where, particularly in game modes like Operations, uh, from Battlefield 1 for example, where you had one guy sitting on a, on, on a hill and just sitting there shelling endlessly. Yeah. He can't do that anymore because he's going to run out of ammo. So he's going to have to actually move away from there and go and resupply. Um, which I think is a, is, is a good thing for balance in general. Yeah, it definitely seems to be. And that's something I think that you guys have had a problem with in, in the franchise for a while, about people utilizing certain things and not really engaging with the combat. Mm. So I think that loop that you've created, especially with health for soldiers, which is a really big deal, yeah. and then uh, ammo with almost everything in the game, is, yeah. uh, it's a good step forwards, I think. Um, something that one of my community members mentioned and uh, I wasn't hugely aware of it by being a PC player but on uh, console versions of Battlefield the meta is slightly different uh, different weapons are more popular different vehicles are more popular gameplay style is slightly different um, and a question that was asked a lot during Battlefield 1 is that would there be any option to potentially treat the console and PC formats slightly differently in terms of their balance in order to optimize gameplay efficiently is that something you would look for in Battlefield 5, especially with the way that all these new mechanics coming in and gunplay and things like that? It's For me, it seems even more important than ever to know what weapons you're using and what vehicles you're using. So does it make sense that maybe consoles and PC could be treated separately? It's, it's nothing we're really looking into currently, but I don't think it's a bad idea. I think it's something that would be something we would look into as we uh, post-launch in terms of like if we start seeing... Like you say, with the introduction of the um, attrition and the scarcity, um, more focus on actually uh, being mindful of where you shoot and how much you shoot. Don't don't just spend everything you have all the everything at, uh, at once. Yeah, I think there is perhaps we'll. I mean, yeah, we'll see. But I I, I don't think it's a bad notion. I think it's uh it's good to keep your ear to the ground and see um, if that's something we would do. But it's nothing we were planning currently. Okay, that's interesting to know. Um, one really big thing that I want to talk to you guys about, and it's something you couldn't talk about at the reveal, but you have spoken about it uh, briefly since then, is the suppression mechanic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big topic within the community. Um, everyone has their opinion on it, and I think people, I think people are quite split about what side of the fence they sit on. Yeah. Um, with this game, you've come out at the moment for the EA Play build and said that it is visual only. Uh, so you've taken away that aspect where it interferes with your weapons control and handling and things like that. Yeah. No, so that that type of mentality that uh, suppression should not be messing with your weapon, that's going to stay. Okay. Uh, but we have some more stuff in the works at home. Yeah. Uh, we still think that suppression is uh, something that is interesting from a tactical standpoint. Yep. Uh, and we still want to make it tactically viable in the game. Mm -hmm. So we're, just like we're doing with the spotting system, we're, we're, we're keeping the essence of it, but we're reshaping it to fit this new uh, version of Battlefield. But I think as we move towards um, closer to release, we'll be able to talk more about it. Um, but we have some stuff in the works. Uh, it's, it is changing, but it's still, it, will, it will be there. Um, but one of the things that is actually in the build today is the um, is one function, which is actually like the not being the one that's being suppressed, but actually the suppressor. Yeah. Um, that is actually one of the few ways for you uh, in the game to apply a um, a spotting mechanic. Yeah. Uh, okay. On an enemy, so if you actually suppress someone, that that player will be spotted. That spotting uh, icon will not be uh, seen 
uh, through walls, meaning as soon as it's occluded, it goes away. You can never track anyone through walls in this game, no matter if you're a recon or anything. It's okay. not possible. Um, but yeah, so you as a suppressor, you have additional power and you have additional information in the sense of like you know when someone is being suppressed by you because you actually mark them and that can be seen by uh, your squad and your team as well. So that we can reveal today, but it, exactly what we're doing back home, which is very, I think it's very interesting what we're doing, <laughs> and it's going to be fun. Uh, I can't talk about today, but the um, uh, the approach is suppression will not mess with your weapon. Uh, that stays true. Well, that's interesting to hear because I know it's a mechanic that was introduced with Battlefield 3. You're looking, talking seven, eight years ago. Uh, I would argue that in every game it's been in, it's never quite been... I don't want to say perfect because I don't, I don't really think that you can say perfect because some people like it and some people don't. There's going to be someone who doesn't like it like that. I, I agree with you, but I think... And I'm being this is like, sounds like super fucking cocky right now. But like, I think the, the approach we have now at home is the one that I personally uh, like the best. Okay. So we'll see how you guys like it. <laughs> Yes, I think it'll, it will be something that I think will crop back up again as as, uh, as time goes on. But it'd be interesting to see what more you're going to do with it. Because I think in my head, a, a, a way of solving the suppression issue was to simply remove the weapon handling increases. But, you know, if you guys are going to do something different, then, you know. There's something, there's something different coming, but again, it won't mess with your weapon suppression. Okay. So, yes. Okay, cool. Now, the customization system that you guys have, um, I'm talking visual customization here. That was quite another controversial topic at the reveal of the game. Now, with the stuff that you've revealed at EA Play, particularly the trailer and some of the content that you've allowed us to release and will allow more people to release in the next few days, I noticed it was a little bit more, I think, muted is probably the best word to say. And I know that the reaction to it was that some people looked at it and went, I don't find that to be what I thought was a World War II experience. It doesn't look like that to me, and therefore I don't know if I really want to engage with that. So something that cropped up on uh, my Twitter feed was people asking whether there was going to be an option to simply turn that kind of stuff off and return the game to uh, like a base or clean look so that maybe all the classes had a, a default look, maybe the tanks were stripped of all their customization, maybe their weapons had all the camos taken off and looked like base, base products, basically. Yeah. Is that something you guys would explore? Because a previous Battlefield game, Battlefield Hardline, did adopt that approach with the masks they implemented. They found they were quite controversial. Lots of people didn't like them. And they implemented a system to turn them off. Is that something you might look for in Battlefield 5, given the response that you had to the customization? I think uh, the customization that you saw in the reveal versus what you're seeing right now, it's like we want to give players the ability to basically uh, build a character you want to build. Uh, the, the game has always been a game where you can play the way you want to play, being a tanker, being a, um, a pilot, being a recon, being a medic. So for the first time around, we're saying we, you can play the game you want to play and you can look the way you want to look. So I really want to stress the fact that like, if you want to look as, you know, the uh, super, like, you know, um, grounded military soldier, well, that's completely possible for you. You can do that. Uh, but what we're, we're currently not looking into anything in terms of like being able for you to turn it off currently. Um, I honestly can't say if we will in the future because uh, the game is still pre-alpha and we're trying to push the, the current system that we have in now. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's nothing we're looking into right now. But I mean, I can't say we won't in the future. I, don't, I, I honestly don't know. Okay, that's really interesting. I think um, from a community perspective, it was extremely, um, extremely split topic. And so I think perhaps people saying, I want to turn it off might be a knee jerk reaction. We don't know to what extent the customization is going to start with and then maybe progress further. Because I know, I know you guys are doing this Tides of War thing. So a lot of the theming of characters and stuff like that that you're going to implement will follow a narrative anyway. And then as you progress through certain places, you've already said that you might be able to uh, maybe to unlock something specific to a Tides of War that you can't get at other points during the game. I think that what you saw in the, uh, in the reveal was more like, you know, what... Exactly. It, 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 it is an ability for the player to build whatever character they want to build. Yeah. But if you look at the, um, the, the, the uh, EA Play trailer we have today, that's literally what the game looks like at launch. Okay. Like that's, that's the, that's the, the well, you can say almost like the style and the tone of it. Yeah. Um, and then, like you said in the reveals, just like you saw people, they had the swords on their back and things like, these are things that if you play the game extensively and then going through the types of war, you might unlock this thing and that thing and you know, all these things, it's like you, you, will, you will see things even further. Yeah. Um, so uh, then you will get more stuff to customize your characters with, basically. 
Uh, and one other concern I just want to briefly ask. Uh, somebody mentioned to me on, on Twitter that is it, it is possible to individually uh, customize the factions in the game. It's not like one soldier for every class. It's that each faction has their own customization. So it's not like a British soldier can run around in German uniform. We, 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 I mean, one real important thing for us is for you to be able to distinguish between uh, enemy and... Um, um, friendly. Friendly, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so what, what we're doing specifically is that, because I know this has been a hot topic online as well, so like how do we lean into that? But the way we're seeing it is that we're actually going to cater and say that like when you come to the visual customization, you will have visual customization, yes, but we're actually going to distinguish certain color palettes uh, okay. for each faction. So. Um, and me being colorblind, I'm like the worst person to talk colors. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But um, there will be a distinct set of colors available for customization for uh, the um, uh, the Germans. And there will be a distinct color palette available for the, the Brits. And that's just one thing we're using to actually distinguish between the factions. We're going to be uh, utilizing things like rim lighting as well to apply to make it even more distinct which one it's, it's uh, between the two sides. Because we are aware that introducing customization in that sense does uh, make it more difficult, so we have yep. to lean into other systems to actually make sure that you can distinguish. So rim lighting and then also um, color differentiations and what is available for the customization for each team. Okay, that's really interesting to hear. I think that will help some people understand the direction that you're going for. Yep. Now, there's one final thing I want to talk about, and I can already tell before I ask you this question that you're not going to be able to tell me anything about it anyway. <laughs> but uh, on stage yesterday, Lars and Oscar revealed uh, Royale. They mentioned Royale. They didn't really give it a name. They just said Royale. Yeah, I think it just said Royale. Um, but he mentioned the core pillars of, of Battlefield. When, and he also mentioned that that's what they're going to use to design something different. Is it important to you that the Royale offering for Battlefield is distinctly different to other things out there? I think so. Um, I think it is important that, that, if, that when we cut ourselves you know, a slice of this, uh, that it is representative of the, the core DNA of Battlefield. Uh, that means vehicle, team play and squad play, um, the dynamic world we have with uh, the destruction and everything that we have. So uh, I think that that is, that is what sets us apart as a shooter title and that is something that needs to be, um, that needs to uh, bleed into the Royale offering as well. But uh, I can't say anything more specifically than that at this point. Okay, that's fine because I think a lot of people are a little bit concerned about it simply being added in. A lot of people saying, oh, is it just going to be added in and it's going to be another game mode and is, is it really going to fit into Battlefield? And a lot of people have made good points that the networking systems that Battlefield has are very, very good now, which would support a Battle Royale mode really well. A lot of people said the destruction system would be incredible for a Battle Royale game. Not many other Battle Royales offer that. And now with your new fortification system, being able to uh, counter destruction and almost reverse it and create things and you maybe hunker down an area. I think there are some key elements that could make Battle Royale in Battlefield really work. But I think it's um, I think it's important that everyone sort of just waits until you guys are ready to reveal more information. Because yeah. at the moment, you you literally said the word Royale and went, okay, here's the trailer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean we like like I said, we we will have more information uh, uh, shortly. But uh, nothing more right now, sorry. One of your developers asked me to ask you if you like pineapple on pizza. No, I don't. It's weird. I don't think we can be friends anymore. No? I, like pineapple <laughs> I love pineapple on pizza. I don't dislike it, but it's just like if I, so like I, if I get a pizza, it's, um, it's a very special moment for me because I don't, I don't eat pizza. I love pizza, but I don't eat it extensively. So when I do get a pizza, I make sure that it's, it's, a, um, it's my favorite pizza. And I actually, I'm, 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 I'm in a fight with uh, my wife and my mother-in-law because in Sweden, a calzone is considered a pizza. Right. But in the US, where they're from, a calzone is a separate type of dish. Yeah. So let's have that discussion on your channel. <laughs> is a calzone a pizza or is it a separate type of dish? I would consider it a pizza. I do too. Yeah. It's a, it's a pizza that's just folded. Yeah. But they say it's like, because if you get a calzone in Sweden, there's only one calzone. It always has the same ingredients. All right. Okay. Yes. You can't get like a, like a you know. A, you can't have different things within it. Yeah. You, you will not get pineapple in a calzone if you order it in Sweden. It's a pineapple free pizza. Yeah. So, yes. Okay. Um, squiped is becoming a term. It is becoming a term. There's t-shirts as well. I've actually got one of the t-shirts. I envy you. I uh, want one. You need to just go speak to Corey. He'll, he'll get you. I think he even said he was going to make some more and then send them to you guys and then you can just hand them out in the office. That would be great. No, I mean, I think it came up in one of the... Uh, 
I think was it Corey that just screamed it at the one of the game changer events? I, I think he did. I think he just screamed it out, and it was just. I think he saw it on the screen and somebody just went squiped because it was like squad wiped or something. Yeah, uh, yeah, because we do have additional emphasis on, on squad wiped in Battlefield 5. So you actually get that big messaging on screen yeah. if you're the last surviving squad member. And then if you die, you get full full squad wiped. And he, he, I think he screamed squiped. <laughs> and then it did, everyone just stopped. It's just like, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. We need to adapt it. So it's actually in the office now. It's something that you hear quite often in the playtest. People just scream "squiped," <laughs> uh, so it's it really latched on um, both uh, internally and externally. I think that's really cool. Can we get a medal that says like "squiped" on it? So when you get like you've completed like fifty squad wipes, and it's like got "squiped" written on the medal or something. I can't make any. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to promise anything, and the team back home is just like, "No, we, we can't make that." <laughs> but uh, I will do my best. I think that sounds like a great idea, actually. It could be really cool. No, let's do that. And then one question I wanted to ask you, uh, I know that you've worked for different studios in the past uh, with different companies. Um, I'm going to ask you two questions. First of all, what's your favorite game you've ever worked on personally? And then what is your favorite Battlefield game that you've either played or worked on, however you want to take that question? Um, it's a good question. Um, I think... Battlefield has always been my personal favorite franchise. Yeah. Um, Battlefield is the type of game for me that I play a lot of games. I play extensively. I play games every single day. Mm -hmm. I play at least two hours every day, uh, even when even with two kids. I That's try to dedication. Play. Right I know. There. I try. I sit up late at night, and <laughs> the people who have me on the friends list on PlayStation, they know I'm there playing. Um, so I have to say, Battlefield is my favorite title, and I think Battlefield One was a really distinct title in the franchise I think so I think that would probably be my my uh, excluding Battlefield 5 not because it's not out yet so we can't talk about that yet <laughs> you but, don't count that yet no uh, but Battlefield 1 is probably my favorite but I do have to say that I do I'm very proud of the work I did on Far Cry 3 oh, uh, yes I love that a lot it's really good and then also I mean uh, I don't know if a lot of people play this game but it's, 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 it's such a great RTS game uh, that we built back in the day, World in Conflict. All right, okay, yeah. It's a great game. Uh, also, super proud of that one. Yeah. But if I have to choose favorites, it would have to be Battlefield 1. Do you think that... I remember Far Cry 3 being... Uh, I absolutely loved that game. Adored it. Do you think some of the physicality stuff that you guys did in Far Cry 5 with all of the interactions, do you think that sneakily made its way into Battlefield 5? Because you know the way you can heal yourself by wrapping bandages around your hands. Oh, or like, you know, like gutting an animal and things like that? Um, I, I, I think the way, I mean, the way I work personally and the way I think a lot of developers work is that we take cues from a lot of games, for sure. I mean, we're not deaf. We, we, <laughs> just like, you know, an author reads books and a movie, a, a movie director sees other movies. They, I mean, we take cues from other games. We see what's, uh, what's popular. We see what we like ourselves. But often we, uh, we take cues and then we reshape them and we make sure that they fit for um, our game. I can say specifically that uh, this particular thing is from that particular game. I think it all, all the ideas just meld into your brain and then they just live there over time. Yeah. Over time. And then you can have like ideas that's been sitting in your in the back of your head for like 10 years and be yeah. like, oh, that would work so good here. So let's make that happen. So that does happen for sure. Yeah. So there you are. That's my interview with Daniel Berlin. A massive thank you to Daniel for taking the time to sit down with me and answer all of those questions. I hope you found this video insightful and you've got some answers to questions that you really wanted to ask. Let me know what you think down below in the comments section. Leave any more questions that you might have. I will jot them down and hopefully again in the future I'll have another opportunity to sit down with a DICE developer and interview them closer to the launch of the game. And maybe we can get some answers that we didn't get today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and you've got notifications switched on so you don't miss any of my future videos. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.